So, hi, Adam. Hey. I have a question for my uh, viewers at Radix Exchange. As a new person, why would I be interested or why should I care about DeFi? So, that's a really good question, Ian. The first point is DeFi is really just trying to do everything that the financial system currently does, but way better. So the current financial system has been around for the last 300 years. Banks as intermediaries updating ledgers. And it worked pretty well. But just in the same way that the internet revolutionized like how information was shared from newspapers and books into a peer-to-peer -peer way, we can do the same with finance. But actually even better, because all finance is, is a bunch of rules on how money moves around and under what conditions. Now, if you put that on an open, global, decentralized network, that can be done more efficiently, more cheaply, and for a user, it also means that there's more competition. And now, the reason competition is really good is because as a user picking a bank or a financial institution or somewhere to invest, you maybe have a handful of choices. And because you've only got a few choices, they are by nature quite monopolistic, which means you don't get a great experience, you don't get great rates, you don't get a personalized product for what you actually want to achieve with your money or in a way to access capital and money if you need it for something. What DeFi can do, by splitting this up into hundreds, thousands, maybe even millions of individual financial apps that can all slot together like Lego bricks, means that you can actually end up in a situation where you can have a completely personalized way of managing your money and dealing with the financial sector. And that's everything from just your usual banking, payments, savings, investments, insurance, and in the future all the way up to things like your mortgages or car loans or stuff like that. And Radix's goal is to build that entire system in a way that it can manage the entire global economy. And to put that in perspective of size, decentralized finance today is only $240 billion in the system, which is a lot of money. But the global financial system is $360 trillion. So that is the level of growth that not only do we need to support as a network and as a system, but also the level of growth we see as the potential of the industry and of Radix. Brilliant, thank you. Next question. Yep. Okay, as an individual, could I use the Radix platform as, say, an alternative to banking? So that is a really good question. I'd say that is something which is the midterm vision of all of DeFi. So today, no, you can't. And that's not just because the Radix network needs a few more things adding to it, like the actual uh, smart contract environment and the apps being built by developers, which is coming at the end of this year and being deployed next year in 2022. But you also need things like legal infrastructure and regulations to be in place to replicate everything in banking. Now, that is gonna happen really quickly. And I say really quickly in the sense of in, in human history, just in the same way as like smartphones happened really quickly. When the first iPhone came out, people made like the beer drinking app where you pretended to drink a beer on the accelerometer. It was really cool, it was really fun, but iPhones were really expensive, um, not many people had them, and only the first apps were coming out. But that sparked innovation, it sparked ideas. We're at that stage of DeFi now. The next stage is gonna be building on top of that, where people start building more, better user interfaces more, and it will rapidly come through over the next couple of years, just as an iPhone did. If you look at the first iPhone, it was the innovator stage. That is very, very early. 10 years later, after the iPhone came out, pretty much everyone had a smartphone, and that's what's called like the late majority stage. And we're, we're looking over the next kind of three, four years is getting like into the early adopters and then the early majority stage of DeFi adoption. And that's when replicating everything that you use like a bank for or any other financial service is what Radex wants to provide the network and the tools needed to build that sort of product. Brilliant, thank you. So following on from that, so you would say that Radix is still at the early adopter stage? I would say not just Radix is at the early adopter stage, I would say DeFi as a whole is even a stage before that. It's still in the innovator stage. It's the very, very earliest point. And just as I said in the first question, in the last year, DeFi as an entire industry has gone from a billion dollars in the system to $200 billion in the system. And people think, wow, that's a huge growth. But the global financial system is $360 trillion. And that's the minimum it will go to. And the reason I say that's the minimum it could go to is because that's the same way as like looking at the internet and going, how big can the internet get based on how many um, 
posts and phone calls people made. People hadn't even imagined things like social media or YouTube videos at that point. And just in the same way, decentralization and networks like RadX are going to have that same innovation to finance where it can grow far bigger than even what we can imagine today because it is just so much quicker and more powerful and adds so much to both users and businesses. And now Radix itself is also in the innovator stage because if the entire industry is there, we're still at that really, really early moment. And that growth we're going to see over the next couple of years with the game-changing innovations we're bringing with things like Scripto, with Cerberus, with Blueprints and developer royalties is going to supercharge that growth. And so while when I talk about how long it'll take to get to the point where you're, you're doing everything that you do with a bank or in finance on DeFi, maybe over five, ten years or whatever, that growth curve looks like a hockey stick. And we're setting up Radex to make sure that as that rapid monumental growth happens in the industry, Radex is not only the place where all of that can work, but it's a place where it can thrive. And our combination of Scripto, Cerberus, Dev Royalties, etc. are the only things that match all of the needs of what that rapidly growing industry is going to require to go from the innovator stage to the early majority stage and beyond. Brilliant, thank you. Last question. Yep. So as a Chief Strategy Officer, what would you recommend to me as an individual that I could do that would best help the progress of Radix? So, that is a really good question. There's loads of ways to help. The first, if you're someone who is familiar with development or understands anything about the financial world and building, developing in the financial world or developing at all, definitely get involved with the Alexandria launch and start getting feedback for us and also the rest of the community on how to build with Scripto and build on Radix. That's huge. If you're not a developer though, there's loads of other stuff you can do. The first step is make sure that you are able to explain why DeFi will matter to people beyond just food coins and things like that. A really good example I use to people who maybe don't understand crypto that much or don't understand DeFi specifically is I explain Uniswap as the idea of foreign exchange at the airport. Like imagine that rather than going to the airport and wanting to swap dollars to euros, that when you turn up there and you go to the counter and they give you a really bad exchange rate and they also charge you a really high commission. Imagine if you were someone who frequently goes from America to Europe, you hold both dollars and euros, you're going to need them, you think they're both going to be equal value. Imagine you could put them in a big pot of money and anyone else could just use that pot of money to swap between the two and you earn a little fee every time that's done. Instantly people then get why that would be useful and how it could work in a real world application. That's the first step of getting people to understand Radix. Now when they start seeing that going, this world means that once we see DeFi grow, it leads to better prices for people, better returns, better access to capital on a global basis, and better opportunities for people's capital in a more fair and open way so that everyone, regardless of whether you've got $1 or a $1 million, are then able to get the same opportunities and get the same proportional returns for their money. Last bit is then when they go, wow, this sounds really cool. It's kind of like the internet for money and internet for finance. You go, yeah, that makes sense. And that's why I back Radex, because Radex is the only place where that dream of that level of scale can actually be achieved. And that simple pitch is the easiest way to get people to understand, because if you don't understand why DeFi is going to bring value, you don't understand why Radex is going to be the only place where DeFi can thrive. Brilliant. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Ian.